Okay, so number five um, actually is dealing with shifting functions. So I just put our basic shifts up here, okay? If you add a number to the end of a function, it shifts it up. If you subtract a number to the end of a function, it shifts it down. If you add a number within a function, it shifts it to the left. And if you subtract a number within a function, it moves it to the right. All right, so they give us this function right here. They call it the parent function. And they want to know which transformation describes what happens when we add a within the function, right, within the parentheses, and subtract b to the end of the function. Okay, so let's start with this. If we add a number within a function, see how we add a number within a function? It moves it to the left. So we're going to be going to the left a units. So, so far it's either choice three or four. Okay, now if we subtract a number from the end of a function, see right here, it's moving it down. So we're going to be going down B units. So choice four is our answer. Okay, so uh, number six, they're talking about the numbers of hours of daylight on the first day of each month in Rochester. And it looks like down here, they want us to find, I'm going to actually underline this, the average rate of, actually I'm boxing it off, change. Okay, so here is our average rate of change formula, so we know we're going to be using this. Now they want us to find the average rate of change um, in hours of daylight per month from January 1st. So this right here, until April 1st. So this right here. Okay, so we know that the first column represents our x values and the second column represents our y values. So I could see right here, um, this would be x1 and x2. So then this would be y1 and y2. Now, they do give us numbers for y1 and y2. They don't give us numbers for x1 and x2. But think about this logically, right? What number month is January? Isn't that the first month? And what number month is April? Isn't that our fourth month? So even though they don't come right, and, right out and give it to us, I mean, it's very clear what numbers to use for X1 and X2. All right, so let's plug those numbers into our formula right here. Okay, so I just took these numbers, right? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1 and plugged them in. All right, so if we subtract our numerators, that gives us, what, 4.5. And if we subtract our denominators, that gives us 3. And 4.5 divided by 3 simplifies to 1.5. And that would be, they give you the units right here, hours of daylight per month. And it makes sense, because think about it. Aren't these the y's on top, which is hours of daylight? And aren't these the x's on the bottom, which is months? And instead of writing out hours of daylight per month, if you prefer to do it like this, hours over months, that just means hours per month. I guess you could write it like that as well. Now, it does say to interpret what this means in the context of the problem. All right, well, since this is a positive number, what it means is the number of hours of daylight is increasing, right, because it's positive, by 1.5 hours per month month and you need to somewhere say on average. I like to kind of phrase that somewhere in the middle of the sentence. All right, so let me write that out. Okay, so I just said that the number of hours of daylight in Rochester, New York is increasing on average, remember that's really important, by 1.5 hours per month. And it's also important to state when it happens because if we looked at it, if we looked at the average rate of change, let's just say from January to May or from whatever, from February to December, like it would be Totally different. So it's also important to say the interval we're looking at. Okay, so number seven, if f of x is an even function, which function must also be even? Now, I want to point out, they're not talking about an even degree function, like x squared, x to the fourth. They're talking about an even function. And let me just remind you, okay? We'll do even and odd. An even function is a function that is symmetric to the y-axis. So what that means is, if I were to take, let me just draw an even function. Here we go. If I were to take my graph and fold along the y-axis, one half of the graph would fold directly on top of the other half of the graph. 
Now this is hand drawn, so it's not perfect, but you could see that if this were like true out, graphed in a calculator, nice and neat, one half of my graph would fit directly on top of the other half if I did fold along this y-axis. So this is even. Not that we need it for this question, but reminder, an odd function is one, like for example, again, this is hand drawn, like this where if I were to take my graph and rotate it 180 degrees, basically just take it and flip it upside down, it would look exactly the same. Okay, now, let's think about an even function. If we look at this function right here, okay, what you could see they're doing in the answer choices is they're shifting them all. And if you remember, that's why I put these up here, okay? If you remember, the, this is the way our shifts work. So think about it. Let's start with choice one. If we take our graph, right, if you subtract the number within the parentheses, doesn't that mean we are moving it to the right? If I took this purple graph, let me make it in a different color, make it green, and moved it to the right, would that now be even? Would that be symmetric to the y-axis? Not at all, right? So choice one does not work. Okay, so let's go to choice two. So, I mean, basically, if you move something left or right, it is not going to stay even. So if you look at choice three and choice four, look, isn't that moving it to the left? And that's also moving it to the left. So, I mean, we can automatically eliminate choices one, three, and four. So it's got to be choice two. But let's see why it's choice two. Choice two shows that we're taking a function and moving it up. Okay, we're moving it up three units. So if I were to take this purple graph and move it up three units, let's just say this is up three units, isn't that still even? If I were to fold along this y-axis, wouldn't one half of the graph fold directly on top of the other half of the graph. So choice two is our answer. Okay, number eight. So they give us, this symbol right here means the inverse. So they give us the inverse function and they want to know which equation represents the original function f of x. So the long way would be to find the inverse of each of these one by one. The shortcut way would be if you find the inverse of the inverse, it just brings you back to the original function. So let's just find the inverse of this. Now, we know whenever we see the inverse, all that's telling us to do is to switch the x and the y. Now, don't we know that this is just a fancy way of saying y equals? So we're going to make this an x, and then we're going to change this x to a y. And then all we want to do is get the y by itself this equation. So let's first subtract the two from both sides of the equation. So these cancel, and that leaves me with, I mean, we can't combine these, right? They're not like terms. So we're going to leave that as x minus 2 equals negative 3 fourths y. Now, normally, when you want to get rid of a number that's being multiplied by a variable, we divide the opposite operation of multiplication is division. But I don't think I want to divide by a fraction. So what I can do instead is I can multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal means just flip it upside down. If it's negative, the reciprocal is negative. If it's positive, the reciprocal is positive. So the reciprocal of negative 3 fourths would be negative 4 thirds. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 4 thirds. And the reason I do that is so I'm able to get the y by itself. Because look, isn't a negative times a negative positive? And wouldn't this 3 on top cancel with the 3 on bottom? And the 4 on top cancel with the 4 on bottom? So basically, a number times its reciprocal is 1. Okay, it cancels out, leaving us with 1y, or just y. And now I can distribute this negative 4 thirds into the parentheses. So negative 4 thirds times x is negative 4 thirds x and then negative 4 thirds times negative 2. I'm going to make that a negative 2 over 1, right? Might as well make it into a fraction. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. And then if we multiply our numerators, 4 times 2 is 8. And multiply the denominators, 3 times 1 is 3. Okay, and the only other thing they did in the answer choices was instead of using y equals, they put this back into function notation. So we're looking for which one says negative 4 thirds x plus 8 thirds. So there we have it. Choice two is our answer. Okay, and then finally, number nine, um, they're talking about a parabola here whose focus is four and negative three, and directrix is y equals negative one. So, I mean, personally, I would first just plot this. So let's see, we have the focus is at four, 
negative three, so over four, down three. Okay, this is our focus. And the directrix is at y equals negative one. So we can make a line right here at y equals, I'm sorry, positive one. I don't know why I said negative. All right, now we know if the directrix is up here and the focus, let me just label that F for focus, is down here, we know that not only is the vertex gonna be in the middle of these two, but the parabola is gonna open down. It's gonna open away from the directrix. So we're gonna be using this equation right here, the one that has the negative in front of it. Okay, so let's first, let's first figure out where the vertex is. So if this is at a height of one, and this is down at negative three, there's four units between them, right? You can count it if you have to. One, two, three, four. So half of four would be two. So if I go two units up from the focus, or two units down from the directrix, I will be at my vertex. And the coordinates of the vertex are important, so let's write the coordinates of, of that <clears throat> on the point. So we went over four and down one, so four, negative one. Okay, and again, our parabola is opening away from the directrix, so it's opening down. Okay, so let's fill in our equation right here. So we'll have y equals negative, one over four times p. Now if you forget what p is, p is the distance between the vertex and the focus, which is also the distance between the vertex and the directrix. So we said that was two units. So isn't four times two, sorry, I'm looking at this equation, isn't four times two just eight? So I'm gonna make that an eight down there. Okay, then it's x minus. Now, h and k. These are just the coordinates of our vertex, right? So the h we get from right here, and the k we get from right here. So I'm going to just fill them in in our equation. So it's going to be x minus h, so x minus 4. And then close your parentheses and square it. Now, instead of writing plus negative 1, isn't plus negative 1 just minus 1? So there is our equation. Now, if you look at the answer choices, none of these look exactly like I have here. But it looks like what they did in the answer choices was they got the term, the parenthesis with the square on it, all by itself. Now, I could tell right off the bat, we have an x minus 4 squared. This is the only one that has an x minus 4 squared. So choice 4 has to be the answer. But let's just show, just in case there was other choices, you know, for a different question, how we get this by itself. Okay, so I'm first going to add 1 to both sides of the equation which would leave me with y plus 1 equals negative 1 eighth times x minus 4 squared. Right, these cancel. And then to get rid of the negative 1 eighth, right, to get this by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. So the reciprocal would be, I'll just put it over here, negative 8 over 1, which is really just negative 8. I mean, if you prefer to just write, look, negative 8, you can do that. But anyway, the, the negative 1 eighth and the negative 8 over 1, it's reciprocal, cancels off. So it leaves us with, I'm not going to distribute this, I'm going to leave this as negative 8 times y plus 1 equals, and then I'll bring down the x minus 4 squared. And the reason I didn't distribute this was because they didn't here. Okay, so choice 4 is our answer.